join life. Yes, amazing. So as more and more women will be popping in, I'm going to invite all of you to take a moment to drop into your own space and um, to let go anything that you did if you just woke up or if you already had a whole day if you're about to go to sleep like us, but take a moment to really center yourself and um, start feeling and connecting with your body because that is what working with the goddesses is all about. It's really a very feminine tantric practice that is all about connecting with your body, feeling your body, connecting with your heart, with your emotions, with yourself. So we're going to do that for a moment to drop in. So you're welcome to close your eyes. I invite you to take a few deep breaths and allow your awareness to really follow your in-breath into the space of your heart, down towards your power center, the navel. And try to make your in-breath long so you can go all the way into your yoni, into the pelvic floor and exhaling, releasing any muscles, any tension, any thoughts that prevent you from being fully here. I invite you to do that one more time. So let's take a deep breath, inhaling, bringing the breath down into your heart down into your navel and down into your yoni. And exhaling, perhaps making a little sound. Releasing the body. And then I'm going to invite you to take a moment to connect with your heart and to place your hands in any mudra that suits you in this moment. It can be Kali mudra which is what I'm demonstrating now. You can use Anjali Mudra, which is the prayer pose. You can also just allow your hands to rest on the knees. If you want, you can use Yoni Mudra. You can use the Lotus Flower. But take a moment to allow your hands to connect in a Mudra that gives you a feeling of strength, that gives you a feeling of power, that gives you a feeling of I am in this very moment connected with myself. So I'm taking Kali Mudra as that's the first goddess that we'll be working with in this sadhana. And take a moment to just feel when you place your hands in a mudra, what changes in the body? Is there a little shift that is made? While having this mudra in front of the heart, let's consecrate and offer this gathering of women who want to step more into their own power, who want to step more into their own embodiment, who want to put down their personality at the feet of the goddess. Beautiful way of describing to work with the Mahavidyas. It's really this surrender to an energy that is so much, so much greater than ourselves. With that, we ask for the guidance and support to give and receive the information, the experience of this gathering tonight correctly. And then you can exhale, allowing the hands to relax, to release. And you can gently flicker the eyes open when you feel ready. So before we're going to uh, jump into this call, I would love to hear why you are here. So take a moment, type into the chat box, why did you decide to join? Why are you here? Why are you interested in the goddesses? Why are you here? So take a moment to uh, write in the chat box the reason for coming here. Why are you interested? Did you work with the goddesses before? A lot of women um, wrote me like, I just been waiting so long for this and I really feel the calling to work with these goddesses. So take a moment to drop it in the, in the cue box. Why are you interested? And why specifically are you on this 
call tonight. And for those of you that are watching the replay, I see you, <laughs> welcome. I also invite you to feel like, why are you interested in working with the goddess? What is it that calls you to do this work? Like, is this an inner calling? Is this a curiosity? Is it a need of in like, I just need to transform certain parts of my life and I want to use these feminine practices. So I see some answers appearing. Yeah, only been initiated to learn more about the goddesses. Been working with Kali and Tara. Curious, feel attracted to Kuan Yin. Yes, Tara is the equivalent of, uh, of Kuan Yin. Same goddess, similar energy, different name in the tantric tradition. The archetypes from my last course were so useful is Amanda. And um, yeah, just for those of you that did my last course, the sexual initiatress, where in one module I spoke about the inner goddess, this is really um, diving deeply into the inner goddess. So that's what this work is all about. Yes, wish to connect more with the goddess. Beautiful, amazing. So I'm just going to walk you quickly through the structure of this call today. Please keep in typing while, I, um, while I'm explaining it and my eyes will pop back and forth between the chat box. And um, what we're doing on this call today is I would love to give you um, a more of an embodied experience of what does working with the goddess mean. So before we go there, I'll explain a bit more. Okay, what is this work for? Who is this for? What might be challenges that you have that you're resonating with? will guide you through an embodiment experience of the goddess and then i'm also going to give you all the details about okay what does it mean to work 10 weeks with the goddesses what can that give you how can that help you so you can really feel is this something that is for me is this something that is right for me and after that i also give all the details an early bird and a price to sign up if you want to join the 10 weeks and um, I just, for me personally, the call alone, I'm already very excited to be again connected with a group of women, to have this beautiful embodiment experience with you tonight. And um, I would be, um, be very honored to dive deeper with a small group of women that is going to start on Sunday, because this is when we're going to start the 10 weeks. Yes. So before I'm going to um, dive deeper into this, there's two amazing advanced Tantra teachers, Tantra women that are supporting me and you in this journey. And um, I'm going to introduce them quickly and later they're going to speak a bit more about their experiences with the goddess, just so you don't only have my experience, but you actually hear like how transformative this work has been by, um, by all three of us. So Ishvari, you're welcome to uh, unmute yourself. She is the, the queen of dance, I would say. Ishvari has, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's seven years or six years in ODC dance experience. So for those of you that were like amazed by this beautiful dance where you invoke the goddess, where you feel the goddess inside of you, Ishvari is the teacher um, who is making a very down-to-earth approach because DC is super, super difficult. Um, but Ishvari, feel free to introduce yourself and uh, share a bit more about that. Okay. So can everybody hear me? Yes? Okay, great. So, hi everyone. I'm so Ishvari and I will be part of this journey and I'm so happy to be there in this group of women. So as Arya mentioned, so I've been studying classical Indian dance for six years now. So I'm going to India every year for a few months to study with different teacher. And before that, I started the path of yoga and of Tantra. And so I heard about the Mahavidya before. I practiced the Mahavidya even before entering into uh, classical Indian dance. And uh, just maybe to give a little history of what is classical Indian dance, uh, many years ago, those kind of dance was actually performed, done in the temple. 
uh, as an offering to the deity of the temple, to the main deity of the temple. So it's a devotional dance. It's like you come and you come with flowers, you come with uh, incense, with lights, any kind of offering. Dance was an offering. Those women, they were married to the deity. It was, it was like this in the tradition. So dance was really seen as a sadhana, as a spiritual path. You can use that to grow and to evolve. So this culture of classical Indian dance come from that. For sure now it has been a bit lost with all the different invasion in India. But uh, so now it's more like a performance on stage. It's losing a bit the, the, that spirit when I learn it. But uh, because I knew about Tantra before, I knew about the Mahavidya. For me, when I started classical Indian dance, it was a totally Tantric practice. And my life call is to actually work into the embodiment, feminine embodiment. And so for me, this practice, which sometimes even in Tantra, the practice are a bit masculine. And I was craving for really like feminine practices. This was the practice that made me balance everything because so, to be honest, when I arrived there, it was quite masculine also in a way, in, in a certain sense, the way of training, I mean by that. But this practice really helped me to balance my inner masculine and my inner feminine. And so for me, that has become my, my spiritual practice. What I've uh, discovered because of, uh, as, and as Arya mentioned at the beginning, when you take a certain position with your body, you resonate a certain energy. ODC is all about that classical Indian dance in general, but because I'm training ODC, I just mentioned that name. So even when you do Anjali, when you do the Lotus Flower, Ala Padma, there, we're going to use uh, many mudras, many bangi, many, many body positions, specific body position that make you going to enter into specific energy to call in upon the goddess. Uh, on that case. But now maybe I'm telling a bit too much because this is more about the, the course. And uh, maybe I will stop here for introducing myself. So I hope you get as much excited as me right now <laughs> and ready to dive in. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ishwari. Also, Ishwari and I just had. Ishwari, could you mute yourself again? Yes. We just um, we just finished ten weeks of Mahavidya dancing, and we just danced to Kamalapmika, which is uh, the goddess of abundance and prosperity. And we just finished the dance for Kamalapmika, and we just like evoked her presence inside of us, and then we went right into to be with you. So both of us are very very charged. And uh, another amazing woman that is going to be supporting this sadhana is Anneke. She is, for me, she's the woman of both worlds because she has an amazing um, deep knowledge about Tantra, embodiment about Tantra. And she also has so much knowledge about the physical body and the nervous system. And when we're going to work with goddesses or when you're going to work with goddesses, whether it's with me now or in the future, I feel this is good for you to know anyway, when you're going to do tantric practices, purifications and imbalances are going to come up. Challenges are going to come up. If you're starting to do real deep work, I'm not speaking about, um, sometimes I have a bit of a resistance towards the very fluff practices that are out there nowadays. Um, but if you're really doing practices that go deep, that have like a deep energetic imprint being made on your body, then challenges come up, purifications come up. And Annika is um, this amazing woman that has both so much knowledge on um, holistic health, pelvic floor health, um, as well as um, being a Tantra teacher herself and for years having practice. So she's with us here tonight. So Annika, could you unmute yourself and just share a few words about yourself as well before we're diving into um, the goddesses. Hey everyone, it's so lovely. Um, yeah, thank you, Arya. Um, where to start? <laughs> Not to take up too much space, but um, I think for me, when I, when I started on this path, I, I started combining it after 
only a few years into the path, I started combining it with studies into yoga therapy and functional medicine. And uh, I can personally say that it helped me a lot to be able to stay balanced and not just balance, oh, I feel good today, but really thoroughly balanced and to be able to actually do some of the practices. Because in my case, coming from a very uh, high powered job uh, in my previous life and a very, very busy lifestyle, a lot of travel, my nervous system wasn't so balanced to be able to hold the amount of energy that we, that we move through our, our physical body, our system, our energetical body when we do practices like this. And so in that journey, being able to constantly come back to very grounding practices through therapeutic yoga, through functional medicine and uh, everything around it really helped me to be able to keep um, moving forward on this path in a, in a very healthy way. Because it's true, as Arya says, it's not, and it's not just the state of your current state of your nervous system, but it's also when we go this deep and when we work, especially with the Mahavidyas, they all have their own specific fragrance that all will touch us in our own very individualized way. And it will definitely bring up things. And sometimes they may feel uncomfortable, but it's actually the energy of the goddess is bringing this to the surface so it can be seen, it can be loved, it can be embraced, it can be held, and it can be given back to the universe for recycling as she knows best. And um, yeah, deep, deep, deep healing process. Uh, I'm very excited to be part of this and I'm very excited for all of you to be part of it as well. Thank you. Um, I would love to hear. Um, I really, really like making these calls interactive. So if you ever had perfications coming up, if you had experience with classical Indians, feel free to drop in a comment with what resonates or it's like, oh my God, I never knew about this or like, yes. I know challenges can come up. So if anything resonates, like I love hearing from you throughout the call, because now that, um, that we don't have physical workshops in this COVID time, it's beautiful to still be interacting together. Because normally I'm in front of a whole audience and I see people nodding and smiling and <laughs> looking. Um, so it's an amazing support just to let, know, let me know in the key box. Um, how like how has that been for you have you had challenges i know that all of you are not beginners when it comes to tantra and um, that's also what i called in like this practice is not for women that just started or that haven't done anything because we need a certain level of experience of understanding our nervous system needs to be prepared in a certain way to be able to do this work so um yeah that's uh something to mention i'm going to share my screen um, I'm going to start with giving you a little bit more information, things that might resonate. Then we're going to steer the energy up and move into an embodiment. And after that, I'll give you more details about the sadhana itself. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'd love to see a thumbs up if you can see my screen. You can see 10 tantric goddesses. Yes. Amazing. So let me put this. Um, Great. So in this call, I'm going over how you can actually work with the tantric goddesses. And a few things are really important or they were at least very, very important for me because right now I'm not in a place where I can spend hours on my personal and spiritual work. Like usually I take one, two or three months out of the year to only dedicate myself to spiritual practices. I already did that this year. Um, and now I'm still in a place where I want to do a really deep practice, but my schedule is busy. I'm, uh, I'm having my own business. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I love spending time with my friends, with my boyfriend. So I still want to be able to work with the goddesses without spending hours of personal work. So for me, that's something that's really important to be able to work with them. Also, um, you don't want to get lost in Google. I had a few women that said, I've been just trying to Google so much about these goddesses. And it's like, I get lost. There's a lot of sources of information that just don't provide correct information. It's vague. It's not accurate. So you can go for hours in Google and still don't really know what to do. 
Um, I also really want to invite you and motivate you and support you to do this work without losing your motivation and your dedication. For me, sometimes it can be really challenging to start a deep tantric practice and having to do that on my own. And then I don't like breaking my tapas. I don't like breaking my, my practice. Um, and when I do it in a group, all the times that I've done work like this in a group, there's, there's a different energy field that is created. It's like women lift each other up. It's like one shares their experience. And in Tantra, it's all about transmission. So like one woman transmits it to the other woman. And because one woman experienced something in the field, like it opens the field for the other women to um, experience it. So for me, this is really important, like to stay enthusiastic, to stay dedicated and to stay committed. Um, and also what is really, really important is to feel that what you're doing is integrated in your daily life. So personally, I've done a lot of practices that would not integrate in daily life in any way. If this is something that resonates with you, let me know. Like if you've done, you know, maybe you've done a workshop for a couple of days and you feel high and it's amazing. And then after the workshop, it's like, okay, now what? Like, how am I bringing in this highness into my everyday life? And it's kind of like, okay, I'm practicing Tantra when I'm in the workshop, but now I'm out of the workshop and I'm back into my busy life. So this practice is really meant for you to integrate in your daily life and to work with the goddesses even in your work, in your relationship, in everything that you're doing um, in your daily life. And I'm just going to go over who this is for and see if that's you, see if that resonates. Experienced tantric woman, this is not for beginners, um, which is something why I'm really excited about it. And I know Anik and Ishvari are really excited about it because if you've done a few workshops and you've covered the basics around Tantra, it's like, where do you go if you want to go deeper? There's not much out there for advanced Tantric women, for more experienced Tantric women. So if you are like, yes, I want to go deeper, but I don't want to go over all of the beginner things, then um, that is why I'm providing the sadhana. You really want to go deeper in the feminine part of Tantra. So without having to go through the beginner's courses, I already mentioned that. Um, I've done a lot of masculine practices, especially if you go to traditional Tantra, even the female teachers that I've been following is still a lot of masculine practices. And personally for me, I've been feeling that missing link like each value was mentioning. It's like, I want to have a deeply feminine and embodied practice. So moving away from like sitting for hours and doing mantras and meditation and don't move. It's like, no, let's move. Let's use the body. So if you want to learn more about the 10 goddesses, but you also love to have clear guidance from women that have walked the path before you. So knowing what you need to do, knowing what, when com what can come up, um, knowing that you have guidance and you don't have to do it alone, but you're doing it right. Um, this is really for you if you're ready for something new and you wish to embody your femininity more fully, more powerfully. As Annika mentioned, at a certain point, there's like this metronome, right? Like we can move into one direction and we're going to workshops and trainings. And then maybe there's another direction where we move where like everything is dropped and forgotten and lost. It's like, actually, I want to embody myself as a woman more deeply for me. When I started to do Tantra in this feminine way, I felt a shift was made that never changed anymore. And I often have a lot of women, whether it's in the workshop or whether I'm facilitating in a festival, there's like, there, there is like a certain energy that gets created because you have that embodiment. And I can feel that in other women. It's like when me and my friends are coming together and we're doing these powerful rituals like a shift is made in the energy field i don't know how to explain it differently maybe anik and each very later can can give more words to it but it's like something steady is created like there's there's like a pillar that is made inside of you that you always have access to um you might feel that your tantric practices are scattered um and you would love to put yourself back into alignment connecting with yourself, with your heart, with your body. 
and you want to belong to a very beautiful, powerful group of tantric women that are going to the sacred and um, very powerful journey together. And maybe you have been working with the Maya videos before. I know some of you do. And you know already how powerful this work is and you want to go into a deeper experience. So if any of those um, resonate, then, uh, then let me know. Like maybe there's one that you're like, yes, this one super, super resonates with me. And I'm just going over challenges that you might be facing right now that working with the Mahavidyas can really, really help you with. So you might find it challenging to stay in touch with your femininity, especially when you're taking by the busyness of life and going in a more masculine mode. I have that myself sometimes because a part of my work is also spending time behind the computer and organizing and structuring. And like there is a need to go into that masculine mode but you might find it challenging to then switch back and stay really in touch with your femininity um you might find it challenging to really integrate your practices in your daily life so not just okay on the yoga mat or in a workshop or in a training but it's like throughout the day what can i do um might be really challenging to do practices alone i i'm guilty of that for me that's very challenging to do practices alone. Um, you might find it challenging to really embody and communicate with your feminine power. So not in a masculine way in my courses and trainings, I really focus on initiating in the feminine way. So this practice is really helping you, okay, embodying, communicating, doing things in the feminine way. You might have negative beliefs about yourself of what you deserve or what you're capable of and power of the Mahavidyas is like, okay, I'm calling upon this quality of Kali and I have that inside of myself. You might find that you're putting yourself first all the time instead of others. You might find it difficult to see like your inner beauty, your outer beauty, your self judgments are coming up or insecurities or doubts or fears or this, this lingo between am I good enough or is, is this too much? So these are such common challenges. And I believe that there's one more like in combination with keeping that connection with the sacredness and keeping this connection with the divine on a daily basis that working with the Mahavidyas and keeping a steady practice and really stay focused on the self-love, inner focus on devotion is, is really helping in overcoming everyday challenges. So if there are challenges here that you recognize I actually cannot see the chat box anymore because I'd love to see if you're typing. Yes, I see challenges there too to practice alone. Definitely. Yeah, so I love I love receiving your um, your answers in the chat. Oh, sorry. Um, that's my challenge sometimes to manage PowerPoints. <laughs> A bit too many of them, I see. Yeah. So challenges are too to practice alone. Yeah, for sure. So here you see the, um, the 10 Mahavidyas. So some of these goddesses you might already know. I saw that a few of you already worked with Kali, with Tara in the questionnaire that a lot of you already answered. I saw like Tripura Sundari, you worked with it, or Kamalatmika, who is the equivalent of Lakshmi. Um, and the 10 Mahavidyas are, it's not just, I always say, it's not just a fairy tale. It's not just a, another story of like this god and a goddess. Like from the tantric perspective, the Mahavidyas are seen as unique qualities and energies in the universe. So each goddess is representing a different energy that comes with a lot of qualities that we can call upon within ourselves as women. Men also, men can also work with Mahavidyas, but we're focusing on a, on a feminine practice right now. And the goddess is there to symbolize that you have that quality inside of yourself. So I'm going to take an example. Um, 
a different one from Maha videos just to, to understand it correctly. And if you've been in my workshop before you heard me saying this example, it's like if you want to relate to the energy of electricity and call the power of electricity inside of yourself, and it's like, okay, how do I relate to this very powerful source of energy that we have in nature, which is electricity? Turn her into a goddess. Goddess Electra, who has this like very fierce, powerful picture with like eyes that are fierce. And then I have, I have a deity, I have a goddess that I can relate to because I can look at that picture. I can have a statue of like Goddess Electra. And by looking at that and seeing the symbolism and being able to make outer offerings to this goddess, something is changing inside of ourselves. And I realized that actually that power of electricity, one of the goddesses Bagala Muki is, is very connected with that, is, sorry, uh, she's connected with the um, energy of stopping, but that energy of electricity is like, I can call that within myself. Like that it, it's not, the goddesses are not like this representation of this is what I worship outside of myself, which is what we see a lot in India, but it's being able to see that you have the qualities inside of yourself. So let me know if that makes sense, that there is a powerful source in nature. There is an energy of the universe. And by symbolizing it as a goddess, you can resonate with it because otherwise our brain is not going to understand it. So it's making a bridge to be able to resonate with certain energies, making a bridge to be able to understand different qualities that nature has. And for our brain to be able to understand it and feel it, we need the symbolization. So this is why it's a little bit paradoxical that the goddess seems like an outward energy, an outward deity or an outward god or goddess, but actually it's just to help our brain understand that we can um, that we can call upon that energy inside of ourselves. So let me know if that makes sense and if that's landing. And these 10 goddesses have qualities that help us to overcome these struggles in everyday life. Like Tantra had so many facets, but one part of it is that it's also a path for householders. It is a path for us to help us move through daily life. And by working with these goddesses, it's like, yes, I'm using these energies, I'm using these qualities to be able to move through daily life more easily. And I'm going to ask um, Annika or Ishvari if there is something that you want to add. We're going to speak more about our personal experience with the Maya videos a little bit later. But if there's something that you want to add about the description of the Maha videos, then feel free to unmute yourself. Nothing to add. So much, but at the same time, <laughs> there's so much to discover. Something that I have wanted to say from the beginning is actually we talk about purifications and also challenges, but these are just invitations to step more and more into our innate aliveness because we have all of these aspects of these goddesses inside of us and some are already stronger than others that they are all there and whatever it brings up in the process it just it's like a compliment it's an invitation of the goddess to step into to a, a much more richer and innate aliveness than we already experience right now yeah beautiful what what i love about this is being able to understand myself better it's like, ah, there's all these qualities that I can have and understanding that I have access to all of them. One of the ways how I love to see the Maha videos is they're an energy just like love. Love is an energy that we know is there, that we can feel in our body, that we can physically 
feel it can physically affect us like we feel this amazing bliss we feel in love we feel more happy because that energy is manifesting in our body and the Mahavidyas, I see them in the same way. I can manifest this energy of Tara that is so much love and compassion and wisdom. And I can, just like the energy of love, it can manifest in my body. Like the power that Kali has that can manifest in my body. And I can use that to feel more powerful as a woman. Like there's literally moments um, when COVID, before COVID happened, like when I'm on an airport and I know that like security might be challenging or like, for example, Thailand, I've been flying in and out and I'm not sure if they're going to let me enter. Like I focus on one of these qualities to help me. It's okay. I need to get through the airport. Like I need to do this practice. And it's just like something shifts. It's like literally calling upon that energy and you can physically feel it as much as you can feel being in love. At least that's, that is how it is for me. Ishvari, is there anything you want to add? Yes. Well, it's pretty much related, but um, for me with the feminine embodiment work that I'm doing usually, like I like to, I like a lot to use this, the Mahavidya um, to go into this process. I like also to compare them the same as the chakras. If you learn about a bit of Tantra and yoga, like all the uni all the energy of the universe is included in all those chakras. For me, it's the same with the Mahavidya. Everything which exists in the world is classified by, in a very masculine way sometimes in those 10 Mahavidyas. So for me like using the mahavidya is to be able for you as a woman as you both of you mentioned to be able to connect with yourself and to include all those different facets of yourself because we all have all of it basically and sometimes there is some aspect that we like about ourselves and some other aspect that we don't really like and we just kind of hide it and we don't want to deal with it and so working with the Mahavidya for me is really helping me to see the bigger picture behind it and to welcome all those different aspects, all those different value, uh, sometimes the challenges, the different energy that we have that we may gonna encounter in our life and that we will. Uh, and knowing that also the goddesses sometimes, they are, the goddesses are not just like smiling and peaceful and giving blessing you know like some of them are super scary and for me it's a really good work to include that especially for feminine embodiment work uh, it's amazing to work with the Mahavidya for that to include everything all those different nuances of the feminine Thank you. I see a few questions are coming in. Please save them until um, the end because I'll do a Q&A in the end. And um, so please make sure to, um, uh, to save them till the end. Ah, just one uh, remark because Annika, she's about to teach a class and she needs to go in about five minutes. But I would love, Annika, before you go, um, for you to share your, because you did, very deep work with the Mahavidyas um, to share how this for you has changed and transformed. Like what was the effect? What was the result? Why was it powerful to you? Oh, there's so many stories to tell. Um, He's going to put you on the full spotlight. One, um, we keep talking about this feminine embodiment and the ability to feel ourselves better and overall i would say that is uh that is the, one of the main main conclusions or main things for me but um maybe just an anecdote more to share one time i was doing a very intense sadhana with china masta which is actually the goddess Arya was just talking about the goddess of electricity she's also the goddess of kundalini and um she is depicted as very scary. She cuts off the head of her, uh, of, she cuts off her head, but it's basically just the depiction of when Kundalini rises, when we, when our energy meets our higher self, there's no more ego. So we cut off our head, we cut off the head of the ego and rise up into, um, yeah, into fullness in that sense. But I was doing a very intense sadhana with her and 
uh, together with two other people and we all had the same experience because no one told me that she could also give me a feeling of deep uh, sensuality and actually sexuality and what actually happened i felt i don't think i've ever felt so connected to the energy you know we do sexual tantric practices practices we do all of different types of practices but to be connected to energy to kundalini to the sexual energy in a way that made me feel as if as if i was in touch with that pure eroticism of the universe and i don't mean this in a in a in a sexy way it was like the the energy from where everything is born I, it's even hard to put into words I remember describing it to one of my teachers, like, but you never told me Gina Massa does this. And they were like, well, I didn't know she would have that effect on people even. So it was a very personal experience, but we all, all three of us experienced it. But I felt so completely whole in my own sexuality. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the level of sexuality that made, made me want to interact with another partner to actually have intercourse, but it was as if I was making love to myself as if that eroticism was so high and so intensely pure that there was no need for for two beings to 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 hold it everything was complete inside myself and it was such an incredibly deep spiritual experience as well so it wasn't only a very deep experience of aliveness it was it touched me into my very very core from the base all the way up to into the depth of the heart. Mm. I'm actually getting very warm and kind of uh, <laughs> excited saying it because I wish I could express to you exactly what I felt in this moment because it's so in intensely powerful. And uh, yeah, I really hope we all get to experience such things. That's just a, one one example, one anecdote. Amazing. Thank you, Lo. So after um, speaking more about the videos, I, my videos, I would love to give you a more embodied experience. So for this, I'm going to um, invite you to stand up. I'm going to uh, slightly move you up. So uh, I'll be standing with you. So I invite you to take a moment to stand up. I'm just going to close my window here for one moment. If you need to move a bit after sitting, feel free to um, feel free to move. Because as we mentioned, this practice is much more of move back a bit is much more of a feminine practice it's a very embodied practice it's really about getting into the body combining mudras combining mantras combining prayer to really feel the goddess inside of your body so the whole idea about this sadhana is to evoke each morning with a ritual the goddess inside of you so she is going to so you are going to see through her eyes so you're going to recognize this energy you're going to feel it as you're moving throughout your day so this is what is so important about being able to feel and being able to have an embodiment and by using mantras by using mudras by using dance by using invocation initiation body postures this is the way to start calling in these goddesses and um i'm going to give you an example of a more simplified version because in the sadhana itself we're going to give you a more um um a much more brother brother and how do i how do i say this i'm finding the right words like um it's going to be a more elaborate, is that the right word? Elaborate, I hear it, it's very nodding, yeah. So we're doing a more simplified version because you'll be initiated if you're going to join in a much more extensive version, but I do want you 
to have an embodied experience and feel, well, what can I already connect to? So I want to see all of you. So I'm going to put this on a gallery view. So take a moment to shake your body, to move your body. I'm going to put some background music to help you come more into the space. There we go. Can you, yes, can you still hear me as you hear the music? Can I see a thumbs up if the music is okay? Yeah. So I invite you to close your eyes first. And take a moment to really drop into your body, drop into your pelvic floor. And just take a moment to first feel your body. Allow your hands to slide over your body. We want to be able to feel the energy, we want to be able to feel the goddess. We first need to be able to feel our physical body. I want to invite you to keep your eyes closed and just feel, feel your shoulders, feel your face, feel your hair, feel your neck, your shoulders, your breasts, your belly, your buttocks, your legs. And then you can gently wiggle a little bit, shake the body a little bit so you really feel that you are present, you're connected with the physical body. I'm going to show you the invocation that we're going to do with using a mantra and a body mudra. So I'm going to lower the music. So we're not going to go into one of the specific energies now, but we're going into this energy of Maha Shakti, of Maha Devi. And this is the energy that we're going to invite with an invocation inside of your body. So we're going to start by first using an ohm by creating the lotus that the goddess is sitting on. And I'm going to give credits to Ishvari because these movements are all coming from classical Indian dance. So these are not movements that are made up. These are mudras that have been used in classical Indian dance. So really this um, really tapping into the deeper feminine practices and bringing that into dance, bringing that into movement. So first there is creating this lotus because most of the goddesses are sitting on the lotus flower. So this is the first part that we're doing. And I'm demonstrating first and then I really want us to go into the energy. So that's the first part that we will do by chanting the mantra Om. After that, we will bring the hands up in the mudra that is called Alapatma, which is the lotus flower. So it's opening the hands like this, Alapatma, and you bring the hands all the way up and you're using the initiation mudra, which is, I, I might pronounce it wrong. Ishvari can pronounce it much better than me. Sim, sim, Simamuka. Simamuka, <laughs> which is the initiation mantra that we're initiating, mudra that we're going to use. So with Alapatma, we bring the hands up. In Simamuka, we bring it down. So this is one of the ways how to initiate yourself into an energy, how to call upon any of these energies. So we bring ourselves here while chanting the mantra. I'm first going to show you and then I'm going to give you the full example. So we bring the hands here. Then we bring the hands into prayer pros and it's like bringing that connection from the goddess back down into the heart. So this is the full mudras that we will be doing. So creating the lotus with singing the mantra Om, bringing the hands in Alapatma all the way up, moving into Simasana to the top of the head, moving into prayer pose and then bringing it back down to the heart. Ishvari, you want to add something? 
Ah, okay, I thought you wanted to say something. <clears throat> and we're going to use this body movement together with invocation of the mantra. So I'll take a moment to demonstrate and then we're going to use it all together. And then I'm going to explain you the second part that we're moving into. So feel free to take a moment to just watch. Mahadevi second part you will move into the invitation mudra which is the left hand down the right hand up your right knee bent and this is really first you're calling the energy of mahadevi the great goddess inside of you you initiate yourself and then it's like invite like inviting that energy to come inside of your body with the invitation mudra so left hand is down, right hand is up, which is also giving like, it's this, this spiritual like, um, Ishvari always calls it like the bounce. It's like inviting that energy and also it, it's not only towards yourself, it's almost like inviting that inside of your environment. And after that, I invite you to allow what comes through you to move through dance. So after this invitation, it's like, okay, how does she want to move? And I'm inviting you to move for a few moments while I'll be guiding you, keeping your eyes closed. And then we take a moment to connect with the whole group. Are there any questions? If yes, drop them in the chat box. If not, thank you Ishvari for the mantra. So the mantra is in the Chat box. So, Om Mahadevi Namo Namaha. Beautiful. So, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, to gently drop in. One of the most important parts of doing initiation work is your inner attitude. If you believe that this works, it does. If you believe that it doesn't work, it will not. So your inner attitude, your inner prayer, your inner connection is super important in all of this work with the Mahavidyas. And if you will not be able to bring that inside then it's like forget about being able to really feel and embody these energies so i'm really inviting you to take a moment with the eyes closed to breathe to let yourself be a vessel and to open to feel to open to experience to open to connect with your heart and we will start all together so i'm going to invite you to stand up and to bring the hands in front of the pelvic floor. Taking a deep inhalation and exhaling with OM. That again, creating the lotus. One more time, creating the lotus. Inhale and 
the next exhale, the OM with Alapatma, bringing it up to the head. Keeping the arms up, bringing them back down. We'll do this again. Bringing the arms up. Alapatma. Once you're up. Mahadevi Namo Namaha. Next, own the hands in prayer. Oh. Down to the hearts. Mahadevi Namo. This is the full sequence, and now I'm going to do it without the guidance, just saying the mantra so you can follow and really drop in your own energy. So once I'm home creating the lotus, once I'm home up, Mahadevi creating the mudra, the next om in prayer, down back to the heart. We'll do it three times together. Oh. Oh. 
Да, спасибо. Я сказала, что ты молодец. that you feel you need to re-establish that connection, you move in that invitation mudra, it's like giving yourself that, that motivation that, okay, I'm going to feel again, and I keep moving. Gently starting to slow down your movement while staying connected. Gently slowing down the movement. Gently starting to come to a position of prayer and stillness. Close your eyes or you can feel the effects of this short invocation, embodiment experience, one of many, many ways in how you can evoke the goddess in a more simplified way. And just take a moment to feel, to breathe, to feel the body. Maybe you can even feel a certain energy in the fingertips. And then when you're ready, taking a deep breath and gently opening the eyes. And gently coming back here. And I just love to hear how that feels in your body, if you can feel it. This is something that I already invite you to do tomorrow morning and really feel, wow, how does my energy change in the morning when I add this to my morning prayer, to my morning ritual? I already see somebody where this is from a phenomenal. There's, if we can really focus and feel, and the more that you do this, the more that you're creating an imprint and the stronger your body is going to react to these practices so imagine if for 10 weeks you're doing practices like after 10 weeks your body just recognizes like using nlp literally it's using nlp it's like your body will respond by making alapad maida by making this initiation mudra. so um drop me a few comments on how that feels in the body beautiful kamala says super lovely beautiful softer deepening into the body yes soft i see a lot of words around softness yes so um i really wanted to give you um a short example of these type of practices that we will be doing we will be doing it in more extensively like really with the explanation okay this mudra means that and you can you can really call this in and this is what it means and um yeah as long as we put our concentration and make these imprints in our body like i said something is shifting something is changing yes so i just want to give you the practicalities 
of the sadhana that we're going to do. So you can really feel if this is something for you. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again. I think now you can see my Spotify, which I don't want. <laughs> Give me one moment to redo this. Share screen. Uh, give me one moment to, yes. Can you see my screen again with the PowerPoint? Can I just have a thumbs up? Great. Um, so I just need to click, yes. So I'm just going to give you the overview of this 10 week sadhana with the details, with the pricing, with the link to sign up if you want to join. Oh, yes. Sorry, this is the previous slide. You see my challenges is sometimes dealing with PowerPoints. Um, so we're starting this Sunday with a live ritual and an invocation. So this, but much bigger and more powerful. This is what we're going to start with on Sunday, which is one, uh, which is a live call. And if you cannot join in, of course, you can watch the replay afterwards and then each monday we're starting with a new goddess so next monday we will be starting with kali the week after we'll be working with tyra then we will continue with tripura sundari and so on and so forth and in the first week of january this is why i feel this is so divinely aligned because in the first week of january we will finish with Kamalapmika, which is the equivalent of Lakshmi, who is the goddess of abundance and of prosperity, of fortune, of fertility. So for me, there's nothing more powerful than starting the new year with an invocation to Lakshmi, to Kamalapmika. And, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's me dealing with the PowerPoint. Um, so each Monday we start with a new goddess and you get everything recorded. So you get recorded videos with an explanation of the goddess that you can watch in your own time. So then there is not a live session that you have to join at a certain time. And that's the beauty of the sadhana is that you can do it in your own time. And I'm going to give the rest of the details on how you can still be live present with us so each monday you will get the new initiation for the new goddess okay, i'm going to use my keyboard instead of my mouse so what is included in this sadhana so you will get 10 weeks of guidance to make your practice easy and achievable by three tantra teachers so not just one it's ishvari anika and i that will be guiding this practice you will receive feminine tantric practices that come from traditional tantra. So especially the dance, it's linked to Odissi, um, the tantric practices. It's, there's a mix between practices that come from Kashmir Shaivism, practices that come from the Sri Vidya tradition. And there's even some influences from more Vedantic practices. But the beauty is, is that it's not new age practices that we'll be doing. Um, it's linked to traditional Tantra to really connect with each of the goddess and bring out these qualities inside of yourself. You'll receive a Sanskrit mantra for each goddess. So you will work one week with the mantra of Kali. The next week you'll be working with the mantra of Tara. The week after you'll be working with the mantra of Tripura Sundari and so on and so forth. And you'll be using that mantra with um, the invocation and initiation in yourself that you can do each morning. So that's this beautiful ritual that Ishvari will be guiding us through. You'll have the video so you can really learn how to fully embody this and do this without having to look at the screen because like this invocation ritual at a certain point, like it will become like a second nature to you. So each morning we'll have this invocation ritual to invite the goddess to move through you throughout the day. And then you will have Odissi inspired dance classes fully recorded from Ishvari to really help you in the deep embodiment and the practice. So each week you will receive a different choreo choreo choreography, choreography, and um, 
in which you can embody the goddess through dance. So rather than feeling it by yourself, okay, how does she wants to move, you will receive a set of practices of mudras of body postures that are already in resonance with her energy. So you can do those in your own time as well. Then we will have our own secret group. Um, people can know that you are doing this sadhana, but nobody can know what type of practices that you're doing. This is why in this call, I'm not giving the exact practices that you're going to receive because those are secret and those are only for the women that are going to sign up. So yes, people can know that you're doing this sadhana, but we're not sharing the practices that we're doing. I'm not even sharing them with my partner. So knowing that there is a power in keeping secret what you're exactly doing. So we will have our own private group for that, where you will also receive support and motivation because doing this alone would be so much more difficult. So you'll receive support from all three of us. Then you will also receive the emotional support within our private group from Anneke. So if any challenges come up, any perfections or impurities, then you can drop that in the group and she will tell you how to deal with that. Like she can give you very specific practices. Okay, go and lie like this to calm your nervous system or do this or do that. So this I feel is crucial because a lot of women that might just be Googling on the internet and start doing some practices have no idea of the type of work, of the power of this work, like stuff might come up, having no clue on how to deal with it. So this is, I believe, even for myself, like I might need <laughs> her support when, when things are gonna come up. So um, there is emotional support that is available to um, guide you through the highs um, and also to guide you to any lows that might be coming up. So you'll have the transmission from all three of us who have done these practices already before. And um, we've walked this path before you, we're not new into this. So there's, Tantra is not just learning from books or from blog articles or from Google. It's really, there is an element of transmission that's happening that comes through experience. So all three of us have done this work for years and um, there's a transmission that you receive in practicing together with the three of us and also by enhancing that with a very powerful group of women that are dedicating to do this together. Um, and in the end, we will do a live uh, closing ritual with Kamalatmika, so with Lakshmi, to start the new year with full of abundance. I want to call in a lot of abundance in my life, in health, in wealth, um, in love, in prosperity. So again, that will be the first week of January. So it's gonna be super, super, super powerful. So I really believe that the, the value of this is priceless. Like I, from the first moment I started to do this work, I was fascinated, I was magnetized. I felt the effects ever since. So for me, value of a practice like this is, is priceless um, because you create such a deep connection with yourself, with the power um, to call upon these energies, to really be in touch with your qualities inside of yourself when you need it. And the results of a practice like this, and if you have done any practices like this before, you know that it creates a very deep imprint in your physical energy body, your emotional body that will support all of your future tantric practices. So if you feel like I really want to be this powerful tantric woman, a 10 week practice like this is setting yourself up for any practice that you're going to do after this. It's like this, you already have this. It's like you move from, okay, I have a basic understanding or I, I'm having a scatter tantric practice to like, from now on, there's like, I have this foundation and everything that comes on top of that will just increase, increase what you're going to do in the future. So being this very deeply embodied tantric woman that for me really shifted my vibe since I did this for the first time a few years ago and I feel it just shifted it forever. Like that is what I can see. And if I look at Ishvari, I'm pretty sure she would agree with me. So um, yeah, I really feel that it shifts your vibe. And you create a connection with the 10 tantric goddesses and practices that you can do for the rest of your life. Um, which for me, I've been looking so long. It's like, okay, and I want to do this and I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm just like, 
coming to coming to practices like this is like ah oh, this feminine approach the softness not anymore this masculine way of doing things like i i've done that for years and i don't want to do that anymore so i know that this is what i want to choose um, from now onwards so I'll just love to share each very, if you can, because Annika already left your personal experience with, um, with the working with the woman. So if you can unmute yourself and just see, like I already said, like for me, the value of this was priceless, but how, like, how has it been for you? Like, what has this changed? How has this shifted? Why was this powerful for you? I'd love to hear from you if you can unmute yourself, each very. Uh, so for me, like I've been initiated to the Mahavidya uh, for the first time was nine years ago. And I had no clue this was, this was existing. And honestly, since that time, it has been, I never had doubt about this practice. I really felt deeply connected to it. And it was such a big calling for me to do that. And also just to, to mention that being for so many years in the spiritual path and trying to discover myself, it has been some moment where at some point I was doubting about my own practice. I was doubting about the path. I was doubting about what really I'm here for, you know, and, and what should I do? Like what kind of practice I have to keep? But I never had this kind of doubt with the practice of Mahavidya somehow this this is the only and, and the dance since i started the dance but i started the mahavidya like before before the dance it was always like such a deep calling that i never had any doubt that this is a good practice of course after there is some practice which are good for some people so better for some people and for some others uh but I can say for me, that was, that's the main things that stay stable since nine years, that this is the practice that I really uh, want to keep uh, for me. And through all those years, like I've been doing sometimes like some very intense uh, sadhana practices for sometimes like once a month um, in the school we were, like we were doing everyday practices with a partner in a preparation for a very big ritual. Uh, and so where we have to work in one specific uh, Mahavidya. So I was picked to represent one of them, which is called, uh, so my, my Ishtar is the one which is more dominant. We all have one or two that we have more resonance with, is Bhuvaneshvari for me. Uh, and I think for five or six years, <laughs> I've been doing this practice every year, um, more, more than that, but uh, every year for one month, every day with a partner, with meditation, with Trataka, with so many practices. And for me, this has changed, has, that's what has changed, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> this practice has changed me a lot. I discover many things about myself. And it was not about the final result, but it was more the process, the whole months practicing. And we were so 10 women and 10 men going into this intense process, meetings regularly, practicing for at least a like few hours a day, each one of us in our own space and sometimes meeting together. Just this process with all of those women, and I know Anneke, for, Anneke, for example, also have been in this kind of experience. It was just amazing just for us as a spiritual evolution and receiving the blessing of Shakti. That's really what I feel when I practice uh, with this. It's like she's here, she see you, and she's going to help you. Sometimes she can challenge you. <laughs> she can play with you a bit. But really, it's so easy to access her through those little practices that we're going to share with you for those 10 weeks. That, that That's how I feel. I feel like a veil, even right now, a veil of grace coming, coming when this is happening. 
and for me like the highest i would say the peak experience that i that i had in the spiritual path was through the mahavidya practice my highest revelation i don't want to describe how it was i prefer to keep that for me but yeah the highest sensation the highest moments my peak was through the working with the mahavidya and then honestly it's like just like you know you're on the right path there is so many synchronicity after which happens my uh Devi is bhuvaneshwari and then at some point i started the classical indian dance and then i discover that the the part of India where this classical Indian dance is coming from, the main town is called Bhuvaneshwar. So I was like, oh, that's a weird coincidence. You know, like my dance that I love so much that I just discovered recently is called the name of my Ishta Devi. So I go to Bhuvaneshwar, I go visit some temples. I, I go every year to India, so I do a little pilgrimage all the time. And one day, for example, I was into a uh, uh, very big Shiva Nataraj uh, temple in the south of India in Tamil Nadu and I was visiting uh, doing my offering and somehow it was a bit weird I was feeling a bit lost that day and then I arrived inside the temple which was huge into a small shrine and I was trying to get some help like trying to know like what is going on here who is this shrine for and and so they explained me a few things, but I didn't get exactly what this shrine was. And so I did my offering and something very special happens to me, like my whole energy changed. I was like, wow, this is very powerful. What is going on here? And in the night, I called my boyfriend and I told him my experience. And he was like, wait, you didn't realize, but the shrine you describe is actually the shrine of Bhuvaneshwari, you know, like she's Nana Shakti, she's connected to that, that was Bhuvaneshwari, you know, it was like, wow, the full temple, the, the moment where I felt the most, uh, I don't know, something different was really just during Bhuvaneshwari. So many different things like this, I went to do another pilgrimage in India in the Kamakya temple, which is the tantric temple dedicated to the Mahavidya, where you have all the 10 Mahavidya on the same hill of the mountain is amazing and powerful. Anyway, uh, so for me, that's really something that I, I recommend at least to try and see if it's fitting for you. Um, but spe specifically as a woman, I feel like in the modern world now, I feel this could be a practice that can help a lot, a lot of women. And just give it a try. I feel it's so easy to connect with them. They are just want to give us blessing and, and show us with presence and love. So, and I think even like the first week, I'm pretty sure you will feel that. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I see a few questions came in. I'll just answer them quickly before I am uh, continue. No, you don't need a partner for this 10-week practice. This is really a practice to do with yourself. If you have a partner, then most likely he's going or she is going to feel it. But no, you don't need, uh, you don't need a partner. And yes, yeah, so there's going to be two live rituals, one this Sunday and one on uh, the first week of January with Kamalatmika. And all the material and the recordings, they are, you're going to receive each week, you're going to receive the material. And then I actually haven't decided yet how long I'll, they'll be available afterwards, but I want to make sure that you have enough integration. So this is something we can discuss with the group, how long you feel that they need to stay available for you. But for sure, I feel, especially in the months after, it's nice to, stay connected and be able to watch the mudras back or the invocations back so it's something that i didn't decide on but within the group um we can decide on okay how long do you think that you'll need these materials i will answer uh the rest of the questions after i'm giving you the investment and also the discount code if you are in and you want to sign up um now basically within 24 hours because we're going to start on sunday so let me 
Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have one more. And just to put it into perspective, that you can have experiences that Ishvari spoke about, that Annika spoke about, that I've been sharing with you without flying all across the world, because that's what we've been doing, or without putting hours of masculine practices into um, into yourself. Oh, somebody is uh, on mute. Yeah. Okay, without having to take one workshop left and one workshop right, um, and without having to figure out what works and what doesn't, because we've done that for you. We flew all across the world. We've put in hours of our own practice. We've taken countless workshops and trainings and we're combining all of our knowledge in order to give it to you on a plate. Like, here it is. You only have to follow this and you get it all together in this, uh, in this amazing 10 weeks. So the investment that is for the sadhana is not just the investment from you towards us, but there is a power of this investment because when you commit and it's like, okay, I'm going to commit, I'm going to make this investment, this is already the first step of the transformation. If you've ever done any rituals with the goddesses you know that you don't go to the flower shop and you buy like the cheapest flowers you go for the most beautiful flowers that you can have and this is what you're offering to the goddess so i really invite you to connect with yourself and it's like do i want this do i want to deepen my practice do i want to use this to integrate in my life do i want to make this transformation yes i am going to fully invest myself in my time my energy financially and as i mentioned before i'm on a busy schedule this is meant for women that have a bad busy schedule but want to integrate this into the daily life ishvari annika and me each individually we i just want to put this in perspective we spent over forty thousand dollars each on all our training on the different workshop all the courses the certifications that we've been taking initiation initiations with gurus in india in remote places that is super difficult to get there but you don't have to pay that because the did like in this we are we are having this for you like you don't have to fly across the world you don't have to put in the hours of practice and um, you don't have to pay 40 or 30 or 20 or 10000 the regular price that i'm going to ask for this is 997 dollars but because you are here and um, because you can sign up now within 24 hours i'm giving an early bird so today for 24 hours right after this call the link is opening and you can sign up for the early bird you can either do three payments of $2.99 if you would love to have a payment plan, or you can pay in full and then it's $7.97, which, as I mentioned before, for me, this power, the practice and the power of this practice has been priceless. If I would have been able to have this opportunity, it would have been a no-brainer. So I invite you to feel for yourself, is this an investment that I would like to make in order to um, have an amazing, unique experiences that for me has been life changing, as well as for Annika and Ishvari that will be guiding you in this journey. To sign up, I'm going to drop a link in the comments that you can follow. You can either pay with PayPal, you can pay with a card. And then afterwards, you will receive all the invitations to the secret group. You will receive all the ritual preparations that you will need before Sunday. So on Sunday, the live ritual will be happening. And then on Monday, we're going to start with Kali. So I'm going to stop, share the screen and let me just drop um, the link here where you can read everything on the website one more time so you can read about the whole program about our experiences about what you're getting and if you sign up now and you're like yes i want to do this i've been waiting to do this within 24 hours you can use the discount code and um, after that the price goes up and you can obviously still join if you need more time to think about it i would love to um 
take any questions that you have. Uh, Karen is saying, is the real initiation mantras? Yes, the dance is included, love. So uh, everything that we give you is included. So the dance is included, the mantras are included, like it's a full program. There's not like a separate package that you need to do. And um, yes, the mantras are coming from a traditional practice. And I will explain the meaning of the mantras as well. So you will know what am I actually invoking? Like what is the meaning of what I am invoking? So I'm here to take any questions that you might have. I'd love to hear from you. Are you excited about this practice? How was this evening for you? If there is any, I'm just reading the comments as I'm walking through. How long is each practice and dance? Each practice, I'm going to give you a set of practices that you can choose how long you want to do it. For the morning ritual, I invite you to do it 15 minutes. Um, at least, but you can make it longer and make it into 30 minutes. You're going to have practices to investigate inside of yourself on how the goddess shows up both in shadow and life, in everyday life. You can take as much time for that as you want or as you need. The choreography for the dance, uh, the dance, the choreography itself will be, normally it's around three minutes, but the class to teach it is you'll get warm up exercises, you will get the meaning of the dance in, in relation with the Mahavidyas and the class itself is very, she still needs to record the classes because we're going to do it week by week. How long do you feel that it takes the class, the dance class? So it will depend, I will see like, uh, maybe I will try with the first one, see if everybody is able to follow. And uh, so I, I see your level also, so make it accessible for everybody. Uh, but what we have done usually with Arya uh, the past few weeks, uh, the choreography on itself was one and a half minutes maximum. Uh, and the class could be one hour probably uh, explaining or maybe a bit less, uh, try to make it like this. I think you will probably need to pause at some point the video, maybe if you don't understand something and repeat the movement again. But we'll do, I will take some time to do that in the video, but in case you can always do that. But maximum one hour, I would say, mm -hmm. for the it choreography itself. But then before that, you will have the warm up and. Uh, the warm up I mean, is a workout also. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a workout. Yeah. Great. I see some of you are saying thanks, excited about joining. Thank you for those of you. Of course, if you need to run, feel free to um, to leave the meeting. It's amazing being in the presence with you. If you have more questions, Ishvara and I are going to be here for some more minutes. To, um, to answer those. So I have dropped the link in the chat box. So for those of you that are messaging me privately, it's in the chat box. I will drop it again because it's otherwise getting lost. So there you can go over all of the information again. So if there's any other questions. Yes, Anjali, um, how long do you Material is of it. Ah, one moment, Julia, and then uh, I'll answer her questions. So I just answered this. I actually didn't think about yet how long the material will be available for. It's something that I'm happy to discuss with the group. This is going to be custom made. So um, it's not something that is, um, um, how do I say, given mechanically. So we're going to have a lot of interaction in the group as well. I'm very happy to give the material um, afterwards for as long as the group needs. So for sure, my, in, my last, in my last course, I had the material available for a year after that. So um, we can discuss within the group like how long the material needs to be available so we can get back to it. Be beautiful. Karen says she wants to join, she's going to manage. Financially amazing. Julia, yeah, you're yes. welcome to mute yourself. I love that even more. 
Yeah, they prefer to speak. So thanks for the, the practice, it was amazing. I'd love to know if the if this practice are uh, like if I can do this while I'm healing trauma. That's the thing that I'm dealing mostly right now. Is it too heavy or too intense for the nervous system while we are healing trauma, especially with sexual trauma? Or can I like make it all together and survive, let's say? <laughs> um what would I, you say? I, yeah. Um First of all, we have Anneke in the group, so she will be an amazing support for you. This is not a practice that needs to be heavy, but I just want to say that it, that with certain goddesses, they're scary, they're more intense, stuff mm -hmm. can come up. Most of my experiences have been super, super blissful. So I, of course, like challenges have been come up, but for me, it was never something that I couldn't handle. It was never something that was like mm -hmm. deep and dark and shitty. But I do want to say just for women that think that Tantra is always, oh, it's happy and I'm in love and this is amazing. It's not like that. So it can, I feel it can even help you to move through challenges that you're facing. So I wouldn't see this practice as heavy. I just want to give a disclaimer mm -hmm. that challenges can come up. And this is also why Annika is in the group for that. And um, my experiences have been really light and beautiful. And especially in lovemaking, I had amazing experiences or in meditation or in dance. So for me, I haven't had a lot of heavy experiences with it, but some of the goddesses are uh, sometimes kicking us in the ass. But if you're on a healing journey, I feel it would contribute. But of course, check in with yourself mm -hmm. and what feels right. But um, you have all our support and the support that you need. And they're not meant to like slap you in the face. And, you know, it's, it's still a feminine practice. Like all the goddesses are rooted in love. So it's really meant to uplift you, even though it might go with ups and downs, it is meant to uplift you. So know that that is the, the nature of, of this work is rooted in love and to connect back to the heart and not to like, <laughs> like put you in the, how do I say that? Like kick you, um, you, do you know what I mean? Like not to, not like I've done a lot of shadow work and afterwards for weeks I had to recover. Like this is not like that. So let me know if that answers your uh, your question. It does, it does. Do you hear me or it's- Yeah, yeah. only your, fr your screen is frozen, but I can still hear you. Yeah. That's more what I wanted to know. Like, it's not something that I need to recover from it after. Like, it's a lot of shadow work that after and a deep no. shit. It's not like that's no. That's know. what I know. It. That's what I meant. It's going to be delivered in a very integrated way. I see that Ishvara, you wants to add something also. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what I could see is that the goddess, the goddess, going to deliver you something that you will be able to take. She's not going to make you face a challenge that she know you're not going to mm -hmm. be able to pass. At least that has been my experience and what I see from people uh, around practicing also with the Mahavidya. So yes, it can be challenging, but usually that means you're ready for it and you can go for it. So yeah, <laughs> I perceive this way too. Thank you. <laughs> and just to check, it's something that we practice. I couldn't get this. This that we do daily practice, yes? For the 10 weeks. So, sorry, you, you're broke. Can you repeat your question? I think the internet maybe on your side is... Uh... She was asking if I understood that if it's a daily practice, something we have to do every day. Yes. I, I highly, highly recommend you to start each morning with the invocation ritual. Mm -hmm. which um, for me is really starting the day with the goddess. I'm going to give you a set of practices that you can do and you decide the amount and the extent that you have available in your time. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend doing the invocation ritual with the mantra each morning. Uh, the dance, you can dance as much as you want. You'll get, you'll get the first materials on Monday and then the dance class is on Sundays. Uh, sorry, the dance class is on Wednesday. 
So like you had already two, three days to feel her out. And then on Wednesday, it's like, okay, now let's really turn it into embodiment. And you can dance as much as you want. You can like the other practices, you can, you can do them as much as you want um, within the, the schedule that you have available. But I do recommend each morning to start with an invocation ritual. I highly recommend that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And you can Perfect. hang out with the other women in the group as much as you want. Like there is, uh, you'll have your options. So it's not like, okay, you have to do two, 10 minutes of this and half an hour of that and this. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is really, really highly recommended. And these are extras if you feel inspired and you have the time and you want to go deeper into the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. See that some of you had to go. See you on Sunday. Beautiful. Any of you that is still here, do you have any questions that are unanswered? If not, then we will close the, the call together and it's so late here. <laughs> it's that time for us. Good. I don't see any questions popping in anymore. So with this, I'm going to close the call. And um, I really invite you to feel whether you're going to join us or not. I'm really going to invite you to take something with you from this call that, um, that you can connect further with. So really take a moment just to be introduced to the Mahavidyas. Um, this has been a secret practice for so many years and so many women will never hear about them, will never have the opportunity to work with them. So just hearing about them and knowing that these practices are out there is already, um, it means that there's already something that's calling you there. So it's already, it's like it's, it's coming onto your path. So that in itself is already a blessing. And for me, I would be super, super honored to, um, to have you on the journey on Sunday. As I mentioned, we're going to do it with a small group of women. So that makes it extra deep, extra powerful. I've been reading the applications personally by myself for all of you that have filled out the questionnaires before. So um, yeah, it's, it's super powerful to do this with a group of women that didn't just start out, but that bring in a certain level of energy and commitment into this practice. So with that, I'm going to close this call. If any questions come up tomorrow, you feel free to DM me on Instagram, Facebook, or send me an email. I'll get back to you personally. I see Jacqueline has one more question. What sort of other feminine practice are there next to the dance and the mantra? So there is um, in like. I'm not going to give the practices in full detail, as I mentioned before, um, because there's a certain secrecy that is happening around the practices. Um, what I can reveal is that there are um, contemplations for you to make that really help you to connect with your emotional body, that really help you to see your shadow aspects and your light aspects. So there's invocations to really, to not, a lot of the masculine practices, okay, I'm sitting on the mat and I need to like shut off my monkey mind and I need to be quiet. But the feminine way is actually connecting with the emotion. So looking, okay, what is the shadow? What is the light that can bring these qualities that I can connect with in these qualities? So there's, um, there's contemplations for you to make that help you connect more to your emotional body. Um, yeah, this is as, because I said, I don't want to go too much into detail because that's revealed for the women that are joining, but um, it's really helping you to look at yourself. So it's not only a 10 week journey of uh, Mahavidyas for me, it's like a personal development journey. It's like, I'm going to grow personally and spiritually. So you'll get exercises to really connect with your qualities, your personal qualities. And okay, how does that link to the goddesses and how can I work with these qualities myself? So there is this personal development that is going to weave into these 10 weeks as you're moving through this practice. So let me know if that answers your, uh, your question. Um, 
No, so we don't meet weekly. So we have two live, uh, thank you Lita for asking clarifications. We have two live sessions and then in, the, in our private group, you will get all of the recordings to all of the materials and I will be live there like certain times during the day. Ishvari is there from time to time. Annika will give in there the support so you can do those practices in your own time. So there's a live call on Sunday starting with the ritual and then the other call is on the first week of January. And I see that Kamala is asking me what class, uh, what time is the live call on Sunday? It depends on the time zones that the women are from. So I'm going to wait to see who signs up and in which time zone they are so I can find a time that is matching um, matching the, the women and, and where they are located. So I'm going to take into account, um, I know that you are on like me, the opposite spectrum of me. So I'm going to take into account that the women can join, um, that the time zones are aligned. So this will be something that I'll decide after I know which time zones are present. Good, Jacqueline, to answer your question. Great, amazing. If any other questions come up, let me know. I'll be here. I'm super excited myself. And um, with this, I'm going to close our call and go to sleep <laughs> before 12 o'clock midnight. <laughs> and hopefully dream about Kali that she's coming into my dreams. Because it will not only influence you during the day, it will also influence your dreams. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to notice that. So thank you for staying with me and with Ishvari until the end. And um, super excited to see those of you that are joining on Sunday to, uh, to start with a beautiful ritual. So yes, I'm going to end the call here and uh, wish you a good night or a good day or a good afternoon or a good evening.